Hello, you beautiful nerds. I'm in a very Star Wars mood, so I thought I'd talk about all my favorite Jedi. Now, this isn't a power ranking. I'm not debating which is the strongest Jedi. In the words of Black Widow, Oh, no, no, that's not a question I need answered. These are just my personal favorite Jedi. So, in this video, I'm gonna rank all my favorite Jedi from top to bottom. Actually, let's do it bottom to top. It's more suspenseful that way. Ray. Ray who? Say my name. I really, really liked Rey when the sequel trilogy got started. Her first five minutes on screen does so much visual storytelling and does a lot to show you what kind of character she is. She's resourceful, smart, honorable, idealistic, sad, and lonely. And this is all before you find out that she's the protagonist of the movie. Some people call her overpowered or Mary Sue, but most of those people don't really know what a Mary Sue is. You keep using the horde. I don't think it means what you think it means. I loved her development over The Force Awakens and The Last Jedi. I mean, she was directly responsible for a lot of my favorite Star Wars moments of all time. But the inconsistencies in her backstory and her story story made it hard to fall in love with her. But hey, at least she edged out Shock T. Kanan Jarrus. I do not like Star Wars Rebels. I think I've said this before, but there are some characters I really like. Sabine is pretty cool and Hera is the best character in my opinion, but I gotta give some love to Kanan. He was a Padawan learner during the events of Order 66 and survived for years hiding who he was. Our fellow soldiers, the clones, the ones we Jedi fought side by side with suddenly turned and betrayed us. He has a pretty interesting journey through the entirety of the series and he was definitely one of my favorite parts of the show. Freddie Prince Jr. does a great job voicing the character and you gotta respect a man who is this much of a nerd about Star Wars. As Palpatine, you would say, and Yoda are the smartest too. Palpatine clearly smarter because Yoda was blind to the power of the dark side and the seduction of, of Anakin. So let's talk about the seduction of Anakin fucking Skywalker. Ben Solo, also known as Kylo Ren, he's the son of Han Solo and Princess Leia. Would you please stop calling me that? Sorry, General Leia Organa, and was trained to be a Jedi by Luke Skywalker. But then after a grave misunderstanding, he falls to the dark side, commits a touch of mass murder, and then redeems himself later. Though I'm not a fan of Rise of Skywalker, his character was done the least dirty in the sequel trilogy. Don't don't get me started on Finn. Ben turns to the dark side in a similar way that his grandfather did, but is not at all the strong and silent type that Darth Vader was. He's also kind of funny. We were unable to acquire the droid on Jakku. It escaped capture aboard a stolen Karelian YT model freighter. The droid stole a freighter. I think that helps to separate him from other characters that share a similar journey like Anakin or Luke. I also love how we actually get to see Kylo betray his master. That's kind of the Sith thing, and this is the first time we actually see in live action the Sith betraying his master so he can succeed him. Anakin Skywalker, aka Darth Vader, Anakin has one of the most compelling stories in Star Wars. A light like Luke, Ezra, and Ahsoka, he starts off as a Force-sensitive little kid who's kind of annoying. But instead of growing into a better person in Jedi, he turns to the dark side and becomes the most formidable foe the light side of the Force has ever seen. Anakin is so complex and so deeply troubled, and they do a good job of expanding on that trepidation and loneliness in the comics and cartoons without taking away from his mysterious nature. He's an amazing character, especially in Clone Wars, but he gets a lot of points off for, you know, the genocide of all Jedi. Jedi side, Qui-Gon Jinn, Obi-Wan's master, and though he was only in the one movie, and that movie was awful, I really like the character of Qui-Gon Jinn. He's a lot like Ahsoka in the fact that he questions the authority of the Jedi Council constantly. Anakin will become a Jedi, I promise you. Do not defy the Council Master, not again. I shall do what I must, Obi-Wan. Except he was a master, so he was respected a lot more, and they gave him a lot of rope. He recognizes that Jedi are a bastion for good and hope, but he also knows that they aren't infallible, and sometimes they have to be challenged. Mace Windu, definitely one of the strongest Jedi ever. Mace is known for his brute force and is supposedly unbeatable in lightsaber combat. He's not around much in the movies, but his skills, strength, and wisdom are all undeniable. Also, his lightsaber says bad motherfucker on it, and that cannot be overlooked. No. Oh. I have the real one at home that has bad motherfucker right here. <laughs> Yoda. One of the most popular and most powerful Jedi, Yoda is obviously one of the absolute greats. The first time we hear an intelligible description of the Force is from Yoda in Empire. For my ally is the Force, and a powerful ally it is. Life creates it, makes it grow. Its energy surrounds us and binds us. I also love that when we meet him in Empire, he's gone fucking crazy from spending decades alone on a jungle planet. Because of the prequels and the cartoons, it's easy to remember him as this regal, wise, 
flippy CGI thing. But I love his introduction as a crazy, annoying, cute little alien. I mean, look at his little butt. He does get some points off for quitting the fight against Palpatine for seemingly no reason though. Maybe it's because he lost his jacket. I get it. It's a nice jacket. Ahsoka Tano. Trained by Anakin Skywalker and Obi-Wan in the midst of an all-out war, Ahsoka is fucking dope. She is one of the most popular non-human Jedi and one of the coolest characters in all of Star Wars. At first, I didn't really like her. Introducing a sprightly little teenage Padawan in the middle of a war zone seemed like the writers were just trying to introduce a character that kids could relate to. Kind of like Ezra in Rebels. And that might have been what she started out as, but she has grown out of her annoying ways and become a wise, nuanced character. Number two, Obi-Wan Kenobi. Like most Jedi at the time, he was trained by Yoda as a child, but was the Padawan of Qui-Gon Jinn. A lot of people don't like the prequels, but one thing most people agree on is that Ewan McGregor was a great Ben Kenobi. Like Luke, we see him go from a young man to a wise old dude, but his journey is way different and they turn out to be very different people. He grows a lot, but little things like his playfulness and his arrogance always stick with him. That added with knowing where his story ends up, he's one of the more developed characters in the Star Wars universe. Number 1. Luke Skywalker Trained by Obi-Wan and Yoda, obviously Luke is the GOAT. His arc through the Skywalker saga is pretty amazing. He goes from a whiny farmhand well, come on, Red, let's go! To a fighter pilot in a war, to a master Jedi, to a defeated Yoda-like misanthrope, to a hero once again. Luke goes through a lot. I mean, I think he loses more than anyone in Star Wars. I mean, like, folks who have lost stuff. Which is cool, because that also means that he's constantly learning. I think that's what contributes to making him so wise in the long run. The Force is not a power you have. It's the energy between all things, the tension, the balance that binds the universe together. Luke will always be considered the coolest, best acted, and most complex Jedi of all time, even though Han Solo is cooler. Don't at me. Okay, that's it guys and gals, but do you agree with this list or do you have a different top 10? Who's your favorite Jedi? Let me know in the comments, and if you want to stay updated on upcoming videos like our upcoming review of Solo, click that subscribe button. Stay safe my scruffy looking nerf herders, and may the force be with you.